Hi there, I'm Dave Stinson with CAE Services, and today we're going to be looking at a filling analysis in Moldflow Advisor. Moldflow Advisor is very fast and easy to get uh, results within the program, and we're going to demonstrate how easy it is to do that. Every simulation starts with three main components. You need a part, you need a material, and you need an injection location. And within Advisor, we can start by bringing in our part through the import function here. You'll navigate to the directory. The software has the ability to bring in almost every major native file format that there is. And so you shouldn't have any problem bringing in your CAD data. It's going to give you a quick fill preview as you go through the wizard here. And then it's going to run some diagnostic checks to make sure the model integrity is suitable for analysis. Generally speaking, this only takes a few seconds. Once this is complete, you'll hit finish. And then you'll move on to orienting the part into the correct die draw position. You need to do this it's in order for the calculations to compute the clamp force correctly, if that's something that you're interested in. So the next thing that you'll do is click over to our geometry tab and rotate the part into an assumed die draw position. It's as easy as clicking the part and then just rotating it into the right position. By convention, the positive Z direction is the die draw or the clamping direction. So that's the way we are going to orient our part. And then it's as simple as clicking set injection locations and picking a gate location on this part. So we're going to just put a gate here on the side of the part. And now we're ready to pick a material. There's about 10,000 different materials in the Moldflow database that you can choose from now. Uh, you can list by manufacturer, trade name, whatever, whatever suits you. You can use a generic or, or go into a, a specific manufacturer and uh, use their material. The next thing you'll do is set up some initial process settings as far as melt and mold temperature, the conditions of the press. You can have the software choose uh, when the switchover position will be and also determine an appropriate injection time if you like, or you can specify those manually. The next thing you'll do is toggle over to the mesh and Advisor does all its meshing in the background, so it's not anything that you really have to be super hands-on with. In fact, all you need to do is there's a slider bar here that picks the mesh resolution for you, zero being the most coarse to three being the most dense or the highest mesh resolution. What that means to you as the analyst is the level of model integrity, simulation accuracy. If you're looking for rough results, a level zero is usually sufficient for this. Then you'll hit finish and then we're ready to analyze. So hit start analysis. At this point, it's gonna mesh the file in the background. And then once it's done meshing, it will run the, the simulation. And then within a few minutes, uh, you'll have your results. So now the software is meshing. You can keep tabs on the progress of your simulation on this status bar down here. And once it actually starts running the simulation, you can watch the fill in real time as it's crunching the numbers. It's another way to keep track of how fast the simulation is running. When the solver is done crunching the numbers, it will pop up with a summary page and it will give us a brief overview of what the, the solution converged on. A window will pop up saying analysis complete. And here's the summary page I just mentioned. You can go through the fill summary here to look at the actual filling time, the actual injection pressures, the clamp force that was predicted to fill the part, part weights, shot volumes. That's a nice summary for you here. You can also now look at the actual filling animation and see how that compared to the fill preview. This is the actual solution. So the knit lines are probably in, in slightly different areas, but uh, similar areas to what the preview showed. This is the more accurate result though. You can also look at our weld lines, where they actually occur, and our injection pressures, as well as the air traps for venting. So for all you tool designers out there, where do you need to put your pins and vents in the tool? That's, that's how fast it is to get uh, some very useful results and filling animations. 
and Mo Flow Advisory. Thank you.